Good evening. I'd like to call the Monday, July 17th, Berlin Select Board meeting order. With us tonight are Flo Smith on my left, on my right, Joe Staub, Tor Nelson. With us also is Diane Isbell, town treasurer, chief water brand of the police department, and Tim Davis of the road crew. Um, public comment. Do we have any additional or deletions, danger? Uh, I would like to add um, discussion on debris removal and or dumpsters. Dumpster. There's entered, please. Um, flooding updates, uh, Chief? Yeah, uh, so a couple of halves here, both in Tor can speak a little bit on the emergency management side of it. Uh, continuing to attend briefs. I don't think we're expecting it. There's going to be rain tomorrow, but no significant weather like we've experienced the last several days. Uh, we're having regular conversations and contact with the state EOC, uh, despite what they might think on their end. There seems to be some communication polls here and there. Uh, the department heads met with representatives from the National Guard on the SEOC's behalf to see if there were any needs that um, we were continuing to have that haven't been met yet. So I think that was a good conversation. Um, there was a delivery of humidifier, dehumidifiers and fans that was delivered to the fire department about an hour ago. Those are for our residents, um, for anybody who might be in need of them. I went down to Cedar Park, Trailer Park, to meet some of the residents down there. Um, getting rid of debris is going to be an issue. We had some conversations with that. Um, I think all the other needs down there are being met currently. There's still some holes in communication as far as people communicating to 211 that live here in town, but us not really being aware of what some of those issues may be. So I think we're, we're trying to bridge that gap. As far as the PD side of the house, no injuries and everybody stayed safe uh, over this course of this kind of disaster. Um, our staffing is good. Um, we had a flat in one of the vehicles going through some water. They hit some obstacle, had a flat tire. Uh, but other than that, our vehicles are in good shape. The equipment's in good shape. Uh, our PD didn't suffer any issues that I'm aware of. The surrounding beatings, however, have had issues. The Washington County Sheriff's Department, the Ferry City Police Department, and Montpelier Police Department all experienced significant flooding. Uh, their processing area uh, were damaged and really not useful at this point. I extended an invitation for them to use our facility. That becomes a problem for them. So, and I think that's all I have to report out. Any questions for the Chief? Very helpful. Thank you. Uh, Tim? How are the roads? Doing better. So they are getting better. They're making a lot of progress. We all are across town. Um, we started Tuesday morning when the war is over. And as far as I can figure, last night when I was doing some paperwork and stuff, there was 17 roads that were unaccessible Tuesday morning, and by 7 o'clock Saturday night, I believe everybody except for the Richardson Road with the culvert failure is able to drive out. I may have missed one or two. I'm not sure, but I believe I haven't got any phone calls that nobody couldn't get out. So from that... Everybody's. And I have to send me a picture of that note from the doctor that said we're trying to medicate it. It's not to work. Um, we've made pretty good headway on Mirror Lake Road, Brookfield Road. Belmont is all the way accessible to the gate. Um, there's still some small some ditch work and stuff to do out there that is going to get done here in the next couple of days, hopefully, with them. Uh, 
me and my guys have started on Chase Road, trying to push the rock, the brook up through to the bridge <clears throat> from what got washed out there. And then we're going to just, my plan is just to work up through. We got one culvert to replace tomorrow and then just start filling in what's left, the two foot, the three foot washouts and start putting the road back, clean the ditches out more. You know what I mean? We went up through and cleaned as much as we could to get the water back out of the road, turn the water back to the ditches, cleaned all, you know, and sent the excavator in front of the bulldozer to open up all the culverts, get the water back to where it was supposed to originally be, clean them out, clean out the bigger pipes or the trees and logs and stumps were all stuffed into. Um, Plugging away. I'd like to thank everybody for everything that they've done for us and support and making phone calls and answering questions and, you know, the contractors that have helped us out. Uh, I believe we're, we're, we're ahead of a lot of other people at this point, I think will be. My biggest fear when this all started was is winter time, whether we were going to get stuff put back together to be able to plow the roads. I think we'll be in pretty good shape here in not much in the close near future. It's it's gonna be a it ain't gonna be a sprint, it's gonna be a marathon for sure to the end. So, Thank you for your guys, efforts. I don't know if you guys got any questions or questions for Tim. Are, are you having issues with the uh, any materials, gravel or anything? No, we're we're coming close at the end of the day, but you know, what I mean, we're 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 making it. Yeah. We're we're pulling out of a couple different places to keep with everything, so everything's kind of coming together. They've had some mechanical failures, and everybody's pet loaded from loaders breaking down, the crushers breaking down. So, but we've been pulling out of the pits around here, um, pit in Graniteville, so. Everybody's getting a little bit of everything. So they've been so the dirt tech guys. I mean, they they like to work late. So in order to keep them moving, they've been hauling in here to the shop. So when the pits close, they got a stockpile to work out of until seven, eight o'clock when they want to quit. So they've been moving along. And the phone calls that I was making there was the. Try to put the whole thing together tomorrow for the bridge for Richardson Road for the pickup of the, the bridge down in Granville. Um, we were having a little bit of trouble reaching the logger that has the bridge just due to the fact of lack of cell service everywhere is now. And so they've finally connected today, I guess, um, from playing phone tag. And, that's looking like right now it's coming together is they're going to pick that bridge up between 10 and 12 tomorrow at some point, And then we'll be here on Richardson road. And then um, as soon as it gets here, I think that's going to be our next, we will stop what we're doing and focus back to Richardson road. We'll get the bridge in, we'll get gravel, put back up to it. So those people can drive in and out of their house and, and then it'll be accessible with trucks. And thank you, Tim. I've actually received many compliments on you and your staff and how responsive you were and how hardworking and dedicated and you were just in there doing whatever was needed whenever. Greatly appreciated. How are the guys holding up? Good. The rest, a little bit of rest, the little more rest that we got over the weekend was definitely what everybody needed. To, you know what I mean? From six o'clock Monday morning until I think I left 7.30 Saturday night with like 93 hours. Mm -hmm. Those guys were only four hours behind me. And that was just because I was coming in a little earlier in the morning just to kind of triage things and get everybody pointed in the right direction and where we were going and make sure that things were lined up before we peeled off and started going on the next one. So, so you have enough trucks? 
need any more equipment? I was going to say, because I mean, my next question. I yeah. think we're good at this point. Like everything, you know what I mean? Like, problem is, is like, the biggest problem now is we're having with the trucks is the, the lines everywhere. It's like every person I've talked to in the last couple of days from the surrounding towns to the truck drivers that are hauling for us to our trucks going in and getting the bigger rock, the type two is you pull in there and there is a line of tailgates as far as you can see in front of you in every pit because it's just they're trying to get the East Mount Fair and Callis and Cabot and Plainfield and Marshfield and more town. It's just some of them guys have never seen anything like that before. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just kind of a, a waiting game and it's played out kind of nice for us with, like I said, bringing material here because if they get jammed up, they can start pulling out of what they've got here in the yard to pick the pace back up while they shuffle through the works in the pits. So. Were there any additional damages from last night's rain? Uh, just the one over on Marvin Road. The original clean out wasn't quite up to snuff in the the rain that came last night kind of silted the the brook ditch back in and it turned it back out into the road. But we went down today with our excavator and really cleaned it, cleaned it. And I just had the I mean just wind roll because it's all good gravel. I told them just wind roll it right up the side of the road. They still got their one lane road on the side of it. And then it, he said it was already starting to dry out. So my plan there is just to pick it up and put it in the truck and take it back where it came from. Any more questions for Tim? Pain Turnpike. That's going to be a big one. Yeah. And that's going to end up. I know where we left it morning we were kind of talking about um looking at the possibility of at least knocking it in and backfilling it some to um stabilize the infrastructure that runs through there between our water line and the sewer line that run down through there and i just but um, i know as far as we talked this morning that everybody kind of doesn't feel comfortable trying to open it back up with traffic not knowing what voids and everything else are underneath there. And then it's all fresh material that starts to rain or we get any more heavy rain and it decides to start going around the pipe. I'm assuming that it went around the pipe just for the sheer head pressure on it. If it starts to take that out in the middle of the night, nobody knows about it. Nobody ends up running into that hole. So we're potentially looking at another Fisher Road extended uh, closure on that road. Well, the only good thing about it is at least it's not on the way to the hospital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Montpelier was the one that really, I think, suffered for that being Fisher Road being closed. Okay, uh, fire department, Joe? Matt, did you want to say anything you want me to say? Well, uh, good evening, everybody. I, I can't see you, but I, I trust you're there. Um, I apologize for not being there uh, in person, but the emergency calls took priority tonight. Um, we are uh, still active at the Four Corners Fire Station. We ended up hosting the... Um, FEMA Region 1 Incident Support Team and the uh, uh, the coordinator for pretty much all the swift water rescue teams in the state. When they evacuated the State Emergency Operations Center, they called and asked if they could come uh, take some space in our uh, firehouse. They've successfully done that now uh, for a week. Uh, it did. We did identify some, uh, some challenges that uh, we didn't necessarily... Uh, uh, know about going into this, but I think we'll be on the on the tap going forward for us to take a look at. Um, we have the same level of electrical service coming into the firehouse that I have in my house. Uh, it's 200 amp service. 
So uh, it's pretty under, it was probably very appropriate for when the firehouse was built in the early nineties, but um, you know, we're going to have to take a look at that uh, as we go forward. I'm not entirely sure when we'll be done with uh, our guests. Um, I would say within the next week or so um, we have gone back as a fire department. And I, I guess let me ask this. Do you want to, kind of an idea of what we did throughout the week or do you just want to know kind of where we're at now and going forward? Oh, probably both. Okay. Well, so we stood up um, Monday um, and started operations based out of the Four Corners station. And we ended up actually coordinating a lot of the swift water rescue uh, calls for service across central Vermont because we had the personnel there that were going to do them. Uh, Monday night, we slept about 75 people in the Four Corners Fire Station that has a sleeping capacity of four. Um, all of the urban search and rescue teams that were coming in from out of state from as far away as North Carolina and Michigan uh, touched down at the Berlin Firehouse before they were sent out to their staging areas, and their response areas. Uh, we worked pretty well solid Monday until about uh, one o'clock Tuesday morning, and we were able to um, uh, kind of put everybody down for uh, for rest. Throughout the day Monday, we pulled the trigger on evacuating Weston's Mobile Home Park, pretty much the Route 12 corridor from Chandler Road to Montpelier, uh, as well as the Cedar Drive uh, Mobile Home Park behind the state garage. Uh, we had a crew down on the 302 corridor monitoring um, uh, monitoring the flooding and uh, helping folks figure out how to get out and get in and move around uh, in that 302 corridor all the way from Berlin State Highway to uh, the Berry City Line. Uh, throughout the day, Tuesday, we had crews in and around town, uh, both responding to those requests for assistance, getting out of residences, monitoring floodwaters as they went down, trying to help Tim's crew figure out what roads were open, what roads needed to be open. Um, we worked very closely with uh, Chief Pompeon, with Tim, um, trying to set those priorities for getting um, the, the town back opened in an orderly fashion. Um, we did, uh, where I live down in West Berlin, was isolated until uh, Tuesday afternoon when Tim was able to get Crosstown Road open back up that provided emergency uh, access in and out down uh, on that end of town. Uh, throughout the day, Tuesday and Wednesday, we were working with the uh, FEMA crews and the, um, uh, the state USAR teams, uh, helping them through navigation, trying to figure out where they were going. We had a number of calls for service throughout the day that not only came in through the traditional channels, but came in through places like State Hazmat where they would call and say, hey, well, there's a, um, a propane tank that's uh, uh, off-gassing and has been disconnected and is in a bad shape. Can you guys go take a look at that and try to, try to help figure something out? So a lot of it was triaging those calls and figuring out what needed to happen right away and what, what could wait. Um, Thursday and Friday, we started a pretty big um, – uh, demobilization, if you will. We still had a lot of our folks around, but we were able to leave them away from the station more um, and taking care of their normal day-to-day -day, uh, lives. We did keep a crew on at least during the day through the weekend. Um, of course, we were worried about additional flooding on Sunday. Um, and then, Joe, I believe it was about 3 o'clock Sunday afternoon, you pulled the plug and, and we were done from there. So we're back around to Monday again. We are start. We are keeping. Um, I guess you could say we have the widget board going of the things that um, we wish we had had and we didn't. Um, we did open the shelter at the elementary school Monday night. Uh, sorry, bouncing around a little bit, um, and we had ninety five people in that shelter at one time. Our our shelter capacity at the elementary school is fifty. Um, somewhere we're supposed to have 50 cots and a closet full of supplies. I don't think, honestly, I don't think Berlin's ever truly had that, uh, all of it. 
at once. So uh, we do have some contacts in with the Red Cross to see about uh, filling out the rest of that equipment that's supposed to be in place uh, for us to be able to open the shelter up. Um, I guess I will shout, give a shout out to the school. They have been uh, incredible hosts. All of the USAR teams have been sleeping in the elementary school this week. And uh, they have found it to be a, uh, a, a very, uh, as best as can be uh, expected, but uh, they've, they've been a very welcoming team over there for us. Um, we did, um, I think we're still evaluating. We may have some flood damage to our rescue truck, uh, some electrical damage to it uh, from floodwaters. We're still evaluating that to see what, um, see what we need to do uh, going forward uh, with that vehicle. Other than that, I think um, I, th I think that wraps up everything I had on my list to tell you. Happy to take questions. So just that, just to add to when he was talking about the electrical service. So when um, when the urban search and rescue, the Swiftwater crew came through. I mean, you got 225 people filing through there, and most of them are at the school, but you do have a dozen plus in the station and it's hot, humid. They ended up bringing in, um, AC units. We started out with generators, switched over. I had an electrician come up and switched over to, you know, right off regular power. Um, so that took a little bit, but we also had some challenges with the service. And so that was a couple trips with the electrician. Um, and going back to the number of people, I mean, we had 700, over 760 hour man, man hours um, over the course of that time with an average of probably 12 at the station any given time. Um, that first night, we had a crew down on 302 and helped evacuate over 60 people off, off 302. Um, and the first, I'm going to say Tuesday, Wednesday night, we were doing mutual aid calls in Montpelier. Um, so going back to Chief Pompriant, um and the fans and dehumidifiers that were received, this is for the town residents. We are going to um, help either deliver them or issue them out. Um, we got five dehumidifiers and 37 fans. And I wish that was maybe a little different because um, any one household is going to want two, three anyway, of those dehumidifiers. But it is what we have. It was okay. a donation from Amazon too. You know, that. Nice. That is wonderful. Um, there was a, a number of um, local groups that have set up you know, either a food truck or dropping off food and such. Um, so at the end of the day, we also have a crew that'll go out and distribute that. We've been trying to get it out earlier and earlier. Um, and I don't necessarily think we're we're reaching all the people that probably we should, um, but uh, let's see. So we got a, probably about half a dozen roads. We went out and did a road survey yesterday, and we probably about half half a dozen there's spots that probably. I mean, we can get up the better part of it, but there's going to be some sections of it that we're not going to put a truck, and it would be accessible by a pickup, ambulance, sure. Um, but uh, I want to add to, and the fire department was critical in doing this. We had a lot of people that were safe, but didn't have access to medication or some other critical thing they needed. Um, so Bonnie would take the calls and then we coordinate how to get them. The fire department helped us out on quite a few occasions because they had four wheelers side by side so we could kind of get places we could. Sergeant Monteith physically walked medication of like a half mile to a location on Brookfield Road to make sure somebody has their medication. So you're trying to be creative and getting people some of their essential stuff. Amazing. Wow. So that was just my add on to the Matt's. Thank you, Matt. Any questions for either Matt or Joe? Um, Joe, um, Matt has started the after action review process. Yes. Um, I'd like your permission first before I ask him. Uh, I'd like to have him to see that through to the end. That's okay with you? Yeah. Matt, is that okay with you? Would you want to take that through to the end? Yeah, it's fine with me. Perfect. Thank you. 
And um, Matt's already created a uh, link. Uh, start putting your thoughts online. So I'll send that out to everybody if you have any inputs for it. Any more questions? Comments? Okay. Um, thank you all for your service. Big thank you. And uh, next on the agenda is to ratify the appointment of Tor Nelson as the uh, administrator. Uh, Mr. Chair, I recuse myself from this discussion. No, fortunately, we have a quorum. <laughs> <laughs> I make the motion to ratify the appointment of town administrator appointment of Tour Nelson. I second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we fire the interim town administrator. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> um, okay. Pa <laughs> paving bid openings. Uh, there should be three bids right there uh, that I've received. And I put in your packet a copy of the um, RFP that went out so you can um, refer to it during your deliberations. I have one bid here from ST Paving Incorporated. I'll open that now. <laughs> This bid, the name of the bidder is Jay McDonald. Uh, authorized representative is Paul Lampson, Boston, I should say. And the bid is $118.25 per, per ton with a total job cost of $487,190 plus or minus. This is Jay McDonald, Paul Lawson. Yeah. ST it? Paving. 119, you said? Per ton? Per ton was 118.25. Okay. So I have a bid here from Fresh Coat Asphalt, Shade Pecor from Barry. And for an estimated tons of 5,000 tons. At a cost of one twenty three hundred twenty three dollars per ton, with a total job cost of six hundred twelve six hundred twelve thousand two hundred twenty six dollars. And how much tons? That was one hundred twenty three ton. One hundred twenty three dollars per ton. Per ton. Okay. Thank you. Five thousand. Five thousand tons. tons. My bid was 4,120 tons. I didn't say that before. Okay. Um, Pike Industries, uh, they have a bid here of estimated number of tons and material is 1,005. And the cost per ton is ninety five fifty. The total cost of the job is ninety five thousand nine hundred seventy seven dollars and fifty cents. So, what's the difference? So, I don't think somebody bid it right. They were supposed to be all three separate bids. These are three projects. Yeah, they were all going to bid it separately for each project. I think pipes is. Yeah, there's three, three bids here. Three, three, three bids. Yeah. For each project. To my knowledge, mine is one bid. That's what I got here. They're all, they're all supposed to be bid separate. If you if you read through the the RFP, for sure correctly, it says that all jobs are to be bid separately. And this bid, uh, on their bid, they said- They all asked and they were all told. This one said, this bid is to pave the airport road, Pine Hill Drive, and from the Shaw's Maplewood entrances to the Highway 62 intersection in Berlin as they, per instruction. They must have. So 
just just to add on that, if I may, I I personally reached out to Fresh Coat NST Paving to confirm that they understood that they sh they were supposed to bid each individually. Thank you, Vince. So, Mr. Tri so your first bid there, Brad, did I say which project that was for? That was for um, Pine Hill Drive. The next bid is um, for 2,450 ton at a cost of $91.40 a ton. Total cost is $22,000, $223,930. And that's for Airport Road. And the last bid is for Shaw's Maplewood Skimco. Um, estimated, estimated number of tons is 220. Cost per ton is 176.30. And the total cost of the job is $38,786. And the total cost of all three projects is three hundred eighty-five thousand six hundred ninety-three dollars and fifty cents. Assuming their math is correct. <laughs> well, that sounds like that's the lowest bid that you have for the entire project. Yeah. And I think it's, I mean, I'm assuming that if it's for the entire project, probably the lowest bid for each individual project too. They're all, they're, they're all under 90, 90 dollars a ton. Yes, they're over five. Just over 90. The only thing I noticed in uh, the bid that you had, Brad, for all of the tonnage, their tonnage was much less in terms of what they would utilize for all three projects. So I think on Pine Hill, it was 1,005, and Airport Road was 2,450, and 220 for Shaw's. So that would be just about 3,700-ish. Um, mine was 4,120 or presumably all of the projects. I'm just trying to add up here, uh, 25, can I ask another question? Yeah, go ahead, Tom. This one's just, it's Vince, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We've changed your name since. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm sure I've been called a lot of things since then, but that's okay. Uh, the question is for Tim, actually. Um, Tim, they were supposed to also reach out and um, let you know if they were going to do a the site review and check the tonnage themselves as well. Did they all three do that? Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Vince. Just wanted to I make sure up, that was clear. I came up with 3,645. So, one more thing to add. I'm not sure if you guys were made aware of it because it came came with privy like during his departure and then this happened but we have a state grant to pay you for airport road and I believe it's for two hundred twenty thousand is what we've got the grant for and I believe it's a thirty percent match. So that is where most of this is coming from was it's a grant to pay you for State grant to pay for the airport road for, for the plastic highway grants. Mm -hmm. We received that this year. Um, we got word earlier in the spring that we were accepted for it, but they had to go through 
a uh, review process and whatnot. And we've been waiting, waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and not hearing anything. And then I believe it was the Friday that was Vince's last day. At the end of the day, he sent me an email saying that they accepted the accepted the project and we had been granted the the grant for it. I have still some paperwork to do, but you're saying yeah, and you should you should have received a copy of it, Diane. Yeah, well. okay. Now do, does anybody does the select board need to assign that or not? Are we all set on that? Does anyone need to sign that grant fence? Uh, it'll need to be signed, yes. To, uh, okay. But it, it, it's a it's a standard one. Um, it can yeah. be signed by the uh, by uh, Mr. Nelson as well. It doesn't have to be the yeah. board. It's a. Good. Yeah. I, I do have it. So okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 Ye
Okay. Uh, any, uh, here. Anything else on that, Tim? That was just your worry. Just that if it, if yeah, it expired. Kind of, I'm trying to line this bridge stuff up too. So I'm kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Okay. Um, the um, I guess probably a, a discussion on the local options tax Berlin Fire Volunteer Fire Department merger. Um, I guess first option, first option, first item on the options tax. Um, I know Dave Sawyer was on the aired out broadcast, and I just I wanted to pick his brain, see how if you could talk some comments from that, how that went. Uh, Joe, I think have you done that yet, or do you have any thoughts on how you thought how it went? Or well, I mean, they're giving us it's like a seven to ten minute um, period of time, and there's just you know, there's a few comments that go out. I think it's really about just starting. This is just starting to get the word out to talk about it. Um, I think, I think when we turn around, we're going to have meet uh, the August 7th meeting, right? We, we have like half hour or whatever discussion of the fire department merging with the town. And that's going to be, hopefully, I'm hopefully there's a lot of town folks coming. Um, the two of them go together and they really should be discussed together. Um, but going back to my thoughts on, I mean, you don't get, you really don't get any feedback during the session. You know? Okay. So, um, have you seen it? I have not. Oh, okay. I've seen Dave, but I've not seen your host. Have you seen it? I have not. Either one so, of them? Neither one of them. Oh, my. And so I'd like to see right. more, more feedback we don't, going we out. We don't to the do community. this newfangled social media. So I, I guess the town now has an Instagram account <laughs> or something. Um, well, Facebook. Uh, I guess it's a newer, better thing than Facebook. Can you help us on this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge proponent of the local options tax. I think it will be very beneficial. I think there's more um, opportunities as a result, and I think it will be benefit for the residents and the town. And given everything we're experiencing right now, we need it more than ever, in my opinion. And I think there's just general lot of not a lot of knowledge out there. What it was about, I was talking to Cali today, and, and somebody was just asking for their tax bill or something. And somehow the local options tax got brought up and they didn't know anything about it or, you know, know that we recently voted on it in, in November and and Kelly was able to explain it to them and everything. So um, I think there's just not a lot of good information out there. Um, I wonder if Raylene and staff from Aired Out would actually come to our next select board meeting and actually kind of do a session here. Uh, can I have... can I interrupt just for a second to sure give you my take on that flow because uh, we we do have a a contract with with Raylene um, on aired out uh, to do this uh, so to her, her her contact information is in the computer or I can send it to you again as well um, but the the two interview there were two interviews in June that both Joe and um, Dave did um, we're in the process of looking for two more volunteers, residents uh, for July to do a similar thing. Um, but I would suggest, and Raylene is willing to come to a select board meeting, but also maybe tour um, just to reach out and chat with her. Um, there's a there's basically a program lined up uh, by quarter uh, of how we're and what we're putting together for information to get out to the public. And to your earlier point, they are also able to track statistics um, on who's who's looking at the views um, and give us some demographics on how many are residents and how many are not, um, and if there's positive and negative comments. Um, so she has all that information. She's given me one report before I left. Um, if you just reach out, she'd be more than happy to, to speak with you on it, um, or I can, I can reach out on, and have her get in touch with you um, if that's easier, uh, but we have that it's lined up there is a plan leading right up to uh to november on, on how to manage that and she did a very similar program for barry um 
and I'm not saying that's why it passed, but it, it passed first go around um, following a similar program. Thank you, Vince. Um, so what is our plan for bringing local option stacks back to the voters? Well, we got to do some sort of education on it. Right. Um, before we, we had a, uh, didn't set up a thing there at the uh, Grange Hall. Right. That was there. We had a fair turnout there, too. Um, then... Uh, I think that was about the, all the charter changes. And I'm trying to think, does the town need a charter change to incorporate the, uh, the fire department or is that? No. Is that right, Vince? I, I did not see anything when I looked through the charter or the uh, administrative code that required that. Okay. So the only thing we need to, to do is, is find a way to get the information out to the voters about what the local options tax is, how it will benefit them, and uh, then take and uh, put it up for uh, uh, the uh, voting for a charter change. As far as the education part, um, well, I don't know. <laughs> I know Vince put together, and you probably still have it, Vince, a very thorough overview was in written form and you presented it to us at one of our meetings, select board meeting with other residents. And I'm thinking that would be really good to get out as part of the educational process. And uh, whether we do bits and pieces of that through front page forum or on the website, you know, download the document where people can open it, read through it, um, maybe even have question and answer session. Um, I think any of that would be beneficial because you put a really good amount of information into that document. Yep, there, there's two documents. There's the um, the PowerPoint and then kind of a, I think it's a one pager, maybe a two pager of some very specific numbers and information as well. And I, I, yeah, they're, they're in the computer. I'm happy to uh, pull those out uh, and send them as to, to tour as well. So we if you want, please. Yep, I will do that. So what are we voting on in November? Uh, excuse me, I hate to break in again, but oh. um, uh, Matt Romai has his hand up. It's been up for a while. I think oh. he has a question for the board. Yeah, Matt. Oh, no, I, I was just going to uh, volunteer as tribute for I uh, aired out. Um, if you're still looking for somebody, uh, I'm happy to go and uh, explain how that local options tax will affect the fire department. And um, I, I mean, I if if we are in entertaining the discussion of the merger tonight um i'm happy to to say a few words on that if you desire to hear them sure go ahead um so all those hours that uh joe mentioned earlier that uh i mean it's 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 an under report right now because i uh i know we don't have everything documented but um we're gonna struggle to find a way to compensate our our folks for their efforts last week and part of that is because we are a separate entity from the town. The fire department is not the town. Um, there are uh, grave concerns right now in our fleet. And um, we can see shiny red fire trucks. But when you, when you think about uh, a capital improvement plan for a tower truck, uh, Joe, do you want me to mention our grading right now or hold that this would point. be a great time to mention that okay ISO. so a year ago we were notified by iso which is the insurance services offices the and that's the i guess the best way i can describe it it's the black box that determines insurance rates as regards to fire protection so uh you're graded on a scale of one to ten ten being no fire department no fire protection at all one being uh, awesome fire protection. And it's a, it's a weighted study based on your uh, water supply, based on your communications system, based on your fire department, based on your manpower, based on your equipment. And um, there are, uh, and again, there's, there's a manual for it, but uh, I, it, they put all this stuff into a computer and it spits out a number. 
We have the same ISO rating in the town of Berlin that the city of Montpelier does. And that's saying something because they have full-time personnel in the station. Uh, they have a, a water, a municipal water system throughout their entire town, their entire city. And for us to be able to make up for those things as an all volunteer department um, is pretty epic, to be honest with you. They notified us a year ago that they were going to downgrade us by a grade from a four to a five. And for a single family, $200,000 home, that means about $200 a year in homeowner's insurance. I have not been able to get an insurance company to tell me what that would mean for 802 Honda or Comfort Inn or Central Vermont Hospital, those places. But it's got to be a mint worth of money, just changing that one ISO grade. And for us to maintain a grade of four, uh, which we were notified a couple weeks ago that we got our final determination, we are going to maintain a class four fire rating for the town of Berlin. Part of that we were able to do, uh, just to give you an idea, for a full-time fire personnel to, cut, to get the same point benefit, you have to have three volunteers. It's a three to one ratio. Um, we were able to do that through our mutual aid, our membership in the Capital Fire Mutual Aid System, but we were also able to do that through the work of our volunteers, and they're doing it for nothing. I, I will tell you, I, I have a semi-unpopular opinion that the town of Berlin is not set up right for a volunteer fire department. We have 2,900 nighttime residents. Uh, we cannot adequately um, per, we can't adequately do the job with uh, an all volunteer force anymore, based on the industrial and commercial nature uh, and retail nature of the town. That risk uh, quotient is rapidly climbing. Chestnut Place is a huge risk that's added to our uh, risk analysis. Uh, Fox runs at the next one. That will be another one that adds to our risk, uh, within the town of Berlin. And we're going to seriously have to look at a change in how we do business, um, at the fire department. Um, it's my opinion that, uh, that we need to become part of the town and by becoming part of the town, we gain, uh, we gain things day one, um, our insurance costs, uh, they don't evaporate, but they are decreased significantly. Um, our accounting costs are, are all of these other things that we have to pay for because we are our own entity. All of a sudden uh, uh, become quite less of an impact on the budget. What doesn't change, though, is our need to adequately fund the capital improvement program. We bought a uh, tower truck in uh, maybe a year ago now uh, or a little less than a year ago now uh, we had to do that because our old tower truck was 85 feet and iso requires 100 feet or you're able to reach all of your buildings which i don't think we were able to do anyway but it requires a 100 foot tower so now we meet that uh we meet that requirement that tower truck is used it is not going to survive forever it takes $75,000 a year in a capital improvement plan to replace the tower truck, uh, cash money, if you will, so that when it, uh, when it wears out, we can just write a check for a new one. Um, we don't have that kind of uh, input right now into our capital improvement plan. I think that's where that local options tax becomes so important. Um, I'll take the opportunity while we're here. We're always taking volunteers Tuesday night, 630. Come on down to the firehouse. We'd love to have you, but you know, it's becoming, uh, uh, it's becoming a pretty exceptional challenge right now to recruit, train and retain volunteers, uh, in this day and time. We were extremely fortunate over the last week. We were able to pull from people that we normally don't get a chance to, to, um, to support that, flood operation um 
and I'm hopeful we'll be able to do it the next time it happens. So there's my little pitch for the local option stacks. Thank you, Matt. Anything else on the local options tax? Uh, well, you know, along with the fire department, uh, as Joe mentioned, uh, public hearing will be on our agenda for the next meeting. Uh, from what it looks like, we're looking to form a committee uh, to explore that. Um, and if so, I think it'd be wise to put out um, a notice beforehand looking for committee members. I'm not sure there's gonna be that many people here at the end. Yeah. Hopefully I'm wrong and hopefully we'll have a list of people to choose from, but I, I'd like to, or, you know, in case somebody couldn't make it that night who would be otherwise interested. So you, do you have an idea of, of the size of the steering committee? Wouldn't want to be much more than seven. I was I was gonna throw out five myself, <laughs> but, but I would, number. but I would, you know, I'm, I would imagine we're going to have a select board member on there. I would imagine we would have at least one member from the fire department on there. Um, now, I don't, you know, this work can get kind of out of hand quickly. Um, you know, you got your active firefighters, you've got corporation members, and things like that. I, I, I don't want... Anybody from the fire department to be left out of this process, or, or on the corporation to be left out of this process. So um, I'm not limited to one person from the fire department, and there might be multiple categories. Um, the fire department person I would be on this committee, but well, if you if you shoot for a you shoot for a, a seven man committee, you're going to have Three, one from the select board, one uh, two from the one from the fire department, one from the corporation, and four from the general public. I I personally think that's a good um good balance to start for, and and we can reevaluate it yeah. come Monday. But um I think I will go ahead and send out a notice that um. You know, if you're interested in serving on this committee, to go ahead and put your name in. Well, and just be open to the idea that that um, might change as far as your your balance. And in my opinion, I was thinking more on the lines of, you know, two from the select board, two from the fire department, three from the community. We don't necessarily get a whole lot of community involvement. Right. And this might actually, they might come out of the woodwork. Never know. Mm -hmm. okay. It's always possible. I also would be willing to do one of the sessions with aired out if um, no one else comes forward or, you know, if that's fine. And I appreciate you offering too, Matt. I think it would be very nice for you to be involved as well. You know, someone else who might be good would be Jerry Diamantides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was he was on our board of directors for about six years. And I was thinking of him as well in uh, terms of the steering committee. Mm hmm. Yeah. He's very knowledgeable and a lot of experience and a past board member for the steering committee, if he were wanting to, would be Jeremy. Mm -hmm. so those are just some people that come to mind. I also think Pat McDonald would be great on the committee. Uh, I'm sure there's many residents that would be interested. So that's great. Yeah. Maybe we could even do a mini presentation of the PowerPoint at a select board meeting. It doesn't have to be the entirety. It could be broken down. Thank you. Night, Tim. Thanks for everything. We might be able to break that down into pieces and have a small piece per board meeting, you know, leading up to November. Mm -hmm. So thought. Anything else on the merger and in the uh, local options tax? But going back to November's vote, we're, we're thinking about this be going towards town meetings where you have the majority of the people coming yeah. out, correct? Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else on this? Um, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. 
I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 24-02 for payroll from July 2nd to July 15th, 2023, paid on July 19th in the amount of $72,484.26, payable warrant 24 G02 with checks 23133 to 23147 for payables in the amount of $35,828.75 and the reconciled June bank statements for the general fund and sewer water checking accounts. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, let's see. Here. Signatures for Mr. Boltax. And I have that over here. This was a gentleman uh, we appointed to the Development Review Board uh, a couple of meetings ago and just never saw him before. Well, the, 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 it was misspelling of his name. Correct. Yeah, correct. Okay. And all right, Sullivan and Powers contract signature. Yep. Here again, yes. this is a uh, contract we approved uh, last week, but uh, did not actually sign the right. form. Right, the original. It's two of them exactly the same. This is second year of a three-year contract, and this is just boilerplate. You know, this is what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, and how they can think. So, thank you. Okay. Okay. Exactly. The same. And we do have it scheduled for the last week in September for me to be doing the audit. Okay. Um, the approval of the minutes of June 19th. I make the motion to approve the minutes of June 19th, but there are just a few grammatical um, issues under stray animal holding agreement on page two. Um, the it needs to say stray animal um, there and on page three just a few grammaticals nothing major and I'll pass those over to tour so those will be integrated but I see no reason not to approve them based on that your second second uh, any further discussion all those in favor aye aye Motion carries. Uh, approval of June 26 minutes. I make the motion to approve the Monday, June 26 regular select board meeting minutes as presented. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. And the approval of the July 10th minutes. I make the motion to go ahead and approve the Monday, July 10th minutes as well. That was a rescheduled select board meeting. Your second. I second. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And minutes for July 12th. I also go ahead and make the motion to approve the emergency meeting regular select board minutes for Wednesday, July 12th, 2023, as presented to us this evening. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Uh, round table as well? No, nothing, thank you. Joe? Um, oh, good. Thank you. Sure. Uh, a couple things, believe it or not. Um, first of all, I'd like to extend a big thanks to First Student, who is the school, school bus contractor. They were uh, very helpful Monday night and doing several rounds of evacuations, moving people to school, moving people to the uh, Barry Auditorium, uh, getting people off the Barry Montpelier Road. Uh, into shelter. Um, they were um, excellent to work with. They were very helpful and did a lot of great work. Uh, secondly, I also like to extend a thanks to Shaw's um, 
They had a lot of people sleeping in their parking lot Monday night, including me. Um, and they came around uh, very early Monday, uh, Tuesday morning, offering food and beverages and use of the restrooms, even though the store was not open yet. Uh, they were very uh, grateful and accommodating to that. And and we'll have a whole lot more of thanks as, as time go on, but I just want to start that off. Uh, in your packet, uh, the town health officer uh, solicitation went out today, and a copy of that is in your uh, packet. Um, and then lastly, as was mentioned earlier, um, from the emergency management team, uh, we definitely have a need for a shelter manager and a shelter operations team um, moving forward. And we're going to need to work on that uh, in the future. And then lastly, I uh, would like to talk about the removal of dumpsters. Yes. yes, sorry about that. I forgot that. And before we discuss the debris removal, I would like to give a big shout out for all of the folks who have extended themselves tremendously. I received a tremendous amount of thanks to um, the road crew. And I know the fire department has done a lot as has you tour and uh, the police department. I just am so proud of us and here in Berlin. I'm glad to be a part of it. So I thank everyone for everything. Okay, on the dumpsters. So I guess the biggest need for dumpsters right now is the uh, mobile home park on Cedar Drive. Um, I've got a call into the state EOC right now um, asking what exactly our responsibility is versus the mobile home park owners as far as debris. Um, Currently, they're being told by the owners that just to pile uh, any debris into the, uh, you know, to the right of way of the, of the road there, um, and the town will come by and take care of that. Um, That's what they're being told? Right. And either way, um, it's going to be um, very soon becoming a, a health issue um, might even you know need to get the health officer involved um but we, we must when you say debris you're talking just flotsam or are you talking uh, uh stuff other than limbs and wood and oh, it could stuff. be it could be any of that could be um damaged appliances uh you know, damaged flooring and skirting and, and so forth. Um, it's not, you know, the town is not supposed to be doing your regular household waste. Yeah. But, you know, this other stuff that comes up, you know, what is going to be our um, take on that. So that's your, your your rugs, your furniture, and everything else. That, Correct. So your, well, regular, paneling, your regular household trash that is, is now, you know, and soaked in flood mud is something different than regular household trash. Well, the other thing also is if you're going to be doing appliances, um, appli even junk appliances have value as scrap. And do we, so you got to, I mean, realistically, you try to separate the metal. Well, maybe we put a couple different dumpsters down there, one for metal no, and one, one for just debris. And as far as I, I think your uh, logs and trees and everything else that's being uh, collected, it, you know, that's going to be the last thing they pick up. Yeah. But, you know, we got to think about that. Maybe we're, we pile it up and we haul it somewhere. We have a stump dump, right? Do we use it? No, that's that's gone by the board. Huh? That's gone by the board, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Well, maybe we pile it in the back and we have a bonfire and celebrate the rebuilding. I don't know, but they're gonna have a lot of debris down there. We gotta take we gotta do something. Well, I mean, realistically, 
all that stuff. There's no value to anything that came down the river because there's too much dirt in it. That's right. You know, we can't run it through a chipper. No. no. Um, I don't know if there's going to be... Now, there is a machine out there. It's basically a grinder, and that's made to grind stumps. So mm -hmm. just dirt isn't going to bother it any. And I don't know if it's worth seeing about uh, if there's one of those kicking around or not, but there's... You'd have to hire it in. I, I think it's the household... Um, Debris, the, the the buildings, the furniture, the all that. We need something you know, to collect it and control it. So if we're going to put it, if they're going to put it on the side of the road, like they're being told, and then the town's going to come pick it up, put it in a dumpster first. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I mean, then then we just they pick it up, the roll off. If that's what we pay for, that's what we pay for. Well, the, you know, Montpelier Barry, they're doing this. And, and it's a little easier because they're a community to begin with. And so you look at Berlin, you can't put something at the bottom of Chase Road. I think some somebody's going to come all the way down the bottom of the hill, drop it in a dumpster. Right. But, you know, you have 30 some odd people down Cedar. And very few of those trailers are going to probably stay. Good. Yeah. Well, the question would be it would be the locating a, the, the dumpster like the only thing if you if you put dumpsters down there they're a lot easier to fill than a dump truck because they're just on the ground sure and but uh, I don't know if Casella or Myers if you could take it ask them for a price on that I mean, if you, if you separate the metal, and I mean, when you get a pile of metal, you can get all the bulldogs, and they'll come and scoop it up and dump it in. I think what you're going to find, short of appliances, people are just going to clean, and they're not sorting. Yeah. Well, I mean, you saw, you can't do anything with furniture because you got the, the the shellac and the varnish on it. You can't burn it. You can't ship it somewhere. You can't chip it. I mean, you chip it, but I mean, you can't. Like, if you were to chip that wood, grind it, you could you could take it to the state uh, in the center at the boiler there at the. But everything else, anything that's not that has a varnish or shellac on it or paint. Yeah, I mean, that's it's, just it's, it's it's all going to the dump. It's couches and clothes. Yep, couches and clothes. And she Except for the ones they're wearing right now. She, that's really sad. You've been down there? Have you been down Cedar? No. Take a ride. Sun's up till nine. Sad place. <laughs> so, the question now is do we pursue the dumpsters? And how are we going to pay for it? And if FEMA pays for it, we have to have somebody there monitoring what gets put into it, whether it's a town employee or whether we contract it out. Um, On what's going in it? Yeah. Like, why? Why? What are you looking to? That's, that's the FEMA's requirements yeah. for, for reimbursement. What's being, what's being put in there? Yeah. Diane? You want to go? <laughs> did, did it look like a one? No, I thought you were. <laughs> Long term. Now. I mean, could, could we? You're going to sit down there and watch it all day? Or are you going to go down there and just kind of? Well, perhaps we'd be better off to take and let them, uh, let the debris get piled up, bring the dumpster in, and then just send down a loader or hire somebody with a okay. loader type of thing and just. That was there, you could say you watch what went into it. Fair enough. That makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, every time I've had a dumpster at the farm, the dumpster is charged by the ton. You don't get charged for the dumpster there. You get charged by the ton when they dump it. Right. So, but now, of course, they may get charged for having the dumpster brought in too. 
that we had been a while. Well, so should we have the town administrator, acting town administrator, pursue this? I would recommend he um, start looking into options and report back. And meanwhile, we can communicate with Cedar, the people of Cedar, yeah. to to pile it out front, get it ready for removal. When you talk with whatever trash company has the best deal, um, you might want to see about two dumpsters. Oh, all that. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking if you if you go to Cedar, it is filled up, and you have another one that. West is pick, yeah. your, pick your poison. Right. The truck can run back and forth and still be going loaded both ways. Because, I mean, it's all about efficiency to them. Okay. Anything else on this? That's all I have. Any executive session anticipated? No, sir. Motion to adjourn. I make the motion to adjourn tonight's regularly scheduled select board meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.